Okay, I think everything is connected. All the whirs are worrying, and all the things are thinking. Welcome to another game episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew 5th ed D&D campaign, a campaign 2, in fact, called The Great Confusion, which sounded like such a great name at the time and then just seemed to be more and more relevant every time <laughs> something comes up. I am the host and DM, world builder, and generally the, the, the botherer of the players. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm here with my players, starting on my left with Pat. I'm Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, cultist, and uh, I guess item gatherer currently. He's doing <laughs> a pretty good job of being a thief. Hmm. Hi, I'm uh, Marie, and I'm playing Annie, who is the, the rogue, but isn't really a thief. <laughs> and I'm next, and I play Medric, half orc cleric. Uh, I've been told I look a little more intimidating due to uh, makeup tests, but uh, hopefully my dice rolls are equally intimidating. Just stare and furrow that little part <laughs> in the middle of your brow until the eye dice change. Yeah, until the wand rolls to a 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to switch over to the map page because we are currently in the midst of a strange place, the Sanctum of Resonance, a remote Argenti Segex uh, stronghold on the edge of the Far Realm. Uh, one of the last of this uh, ancient strongholds that exists from this Argenti Segex, an ancient peoples who were well known for traveling beyond the plains and between them all. And uh, technically, I guess, research is one of the things that they've been claimed to do. Uh, the exact reasons for this ancient group to vanish are still not quite known. The group has ventured to this uh, plain, this area, in search of, well, it's got a little muddied along the way, but essentially in search of uh, evidence of uh, planar transgressions, uh, technically tasked by Tassar to seek them out and destroy them, find the ends of the rainbow, you might say. Um, where the rainbow is um, interplanar wormholes. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Upon arriving on at the Sanctum of Resonance um, through a portal uh, generated through the Room of Four, uh, they discovered this uh, crumbling, magnificent structure. Well, a small structure. Uh, the loud booms of thunder and the lights of lightning crashing off in the distance through small, barely uh, barely visible um, slits in the wall, a very defensible place. After wandering through and finding some evidence of previous destruction, but also of ongoing occupation, at least by mechanical devices, um, the group have discovered that there is indeed one remaining living being here, uh, introduced through a proxy of tiny mechanical spiders who formed an impromptu mouth to communicate, introduced itself as Valenti, and then claimed that it was still stuck here because of the defensive mechanisms and unable to free themselves so asked if you might be able to open the door. It didn't open based on polite or even firm demands, uh, but instead they were instructed to potentially use one of the defensive elements. Uh, I don't think it was actually named, name dropped as the Segex pillar, but it was this uh, pillar in the open grounds out front which seemed to be generating at least part of the shield that protected this place from um, a, a gigantic, gargantuan, terrible, uh, multifaceted cloud of um, phasing in and out portions of uh, faces and tentacles and generally quite disturbing. Medrick took one look at it earlier and is still shivering as a result. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Very much made nope, of right out of there. Um, I just but, uh, spilled my drink. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's that powerful that it reached into our plane of existence and toppled the drink. Chaos. It is chaos. 
But after taking the tower and turning it, essentially, or turning its force not on the outer realm beyond this this rock floating in the vastness of space, um, in particular, Silas took the risk and turned it on the secondary tower in this place, utterly destroying the front door and thus revealing it within the strange chamber to which all of you moved quite quickly. The interior of this chamber contains a, what can be called a glass pillar or glass, or sorry, crystal pillar or crystal cylinder, uh, multifaceted, very complicatedly carved uh, round structure that runs all the way to the 15 foot roof above the tapered roof. From it are emerging multiple cords of different sizes and shapes some of them glistening as if made of stone, but apparently flexible as if made from cloth. Others rigid and angular, all of them running into the floor and off to uh, a door to the west of this particular room. Within the center of the crystal is seen a small figure, recognizably a halfling, uh, although unmoving, and bound up within what looks like an interior cage of a dark metal. Little sparks of light flow from the strange fluid she seems to be suspended in um, and occasionally arc and light up different crystals that seem to be embedded across her skin. Um, for modesty's sake, we'll say that she's wearing some sort of bodysuit. Um, but it is uh, revealing, or it is uh, letting most of her limbs and torso uh, and stomach even to be revealed and open to these sparks. Um, in the moments as you ran into this room, this door now no longer existent, blown to smithereens in all different directions, um, you will have noticed um, a few of the, um, the clouds of me uh, mechanical spiders actually moving into position around the tower and actually re-engaging it. But you will also hear from behind you a loud and thunderous screech as if something did in that small instant manage to make its way through. Um, Anyone can take a look outside, or you can try to talk to the person. Time is now in your hands. But you do feel from the subtle vibrations, from the louder versions of the crackling of thunder, that this place is not going to withstand a very long time. Is there anything you would like to have described, or would you like to just go on your own? Is I'll look outside. To okay. see what's coming. <laughs> uh, you poke your head outside and see something moving in the darkness. Uh, it seems to be uh, winged and. One moment here. Uh, winged and composed of utter shadow. Um, it seems to not so much fly as glide and almost. Um, it's almost the effect of, say, a piece of cloth caught in the wind. It ripples in an unseen wind and kind, kind of, instead of moving from place to place, its form slowly shifts across the place. Uh, it has let out a loud screech, uh, more of a challenge, but you can feel the, the edges, the resonance of the, uh, of the power that it wields. It seems to be, and I'll just move you a little closer to the door, uh, it seems to be uh, heading for the pillar where all of the uh, spider swarms. You can also I'll just make it. out the large form of the uh, of the wandering, patrolling, uh, animated uh, construct you had seen before. You can see it just on the edge, possibly of review. I'll duck back inside and I'll ask about Valenti. Spider form Valenti. Will the spiders in the golem defend us? They will make their best attempts. All right, good. Uh, what should we do here? Is, is this you? And I'll point to the body inside the cylinder. 
I cannot see you. There is no vision within here, and the spiders only have a limited point of view. I presume that this is me. I am, I believe, in one of the conversion chambers. Right, you mentioned something about a transformation before. Yes. How, how do we make that happen? I will need to be released from the chamber. I do not know how. Can I take a look to see if there is any mechanism that seems like it would open it? Sure, make an investigation roll. Just to I'm give just looking a at it gauging. like it seems to run on, ele on electricity. <laughs> you do notice sparking and uh, and that sort of thing flowing around, and you do notice cables running into the the western room. The entire place shudders somewhat, as if I'm going to use my inspiration for that. Okay, as if under a uh, a physical threat. Oh, where did it go? Oh, and by the way, there's a creepy ass flying winging thing out there. There we go. Okay. Um, that flying thing, by the way, has reached and is starting to tear away at the uh, the spiders around the tower. Uh, as you look around this strange device, um, Annie, a couple of things come to mind. One, this is far beyond any device you've ever seen. Um, this shows a level of manufacturing, a level of intricate, int uh, intricate work uh, and manufacture that would rival any of the, the things developed for the palace, any of the, the devices or magical elements they have. It is an extraordinarily complicated device. Uh, it seems to have multiple, um, essentially multiple knobs, a def def several levers. Um, they are all in complicated uh, uh, terms. What languages do you understand? Um, Dwarvish, Elvish, Gnomish, Halfling, and Thieves' Camp. There's something of Gnomish here. But it's like if if you were using some gnomish script to write a different language. Um, you've seen and been exposed a little bit to celestial, and it feels like this is carved in that sort of way. Everything itself is carved from precious stones um, with some metal used, usually sort of a coppery metal used to bind things together. Figuring this out would require not only instructions, but training, you think, to do that. But as you move around, you do notice that um, every time you pass by those uh, corrugated tubes, essentially, which are emerging from this to the other room, um, the skin or the hair on the, the skin of your arms stands up a little bit as if pure power is being, th being thrown through there. Okay. So, so it's as if Celestial was written in Gnomish script. Yeah, um, you can make a history check if you like. I apologize for any thumping in the background. My cat has decided uh. it's Zoomy time. <laughs> history Please. or uh, okay, uh, I would have also accepted religion, but I think that's a pretty good role. Um, history is my better one anyway. Okay. From the teachings you received kind of on the cosmological level uh, when you were younger, um, the notion of celestial is not so much a written language as it is an embodied language. It has power all of its own. Um, the Gnomish script suggests someone trying to tap into that power and control it and able to bridge the gap between the two. Uh, you do know that Gnomish inventions are extraordinarily clever um, and have defied understanding from those who don't study at the Gnomish engineering schools. 
you also do notice kind of by its absence, if you will, that unlike the terrible constructions that you ran into in the body of the Titan, the ones that had been made or manufactured by um, the Athlonians, these ones are elegant, they are clean, they are purely, if you will, made of stone and metal. There does not seem to be any hint of anything organic within them. Outside, there's a bit of a battle going on as the creature swoops down and takes out one of the two groups of uh, spiders. But the lumbering large construct now has enter entered the battle and begins to bash back and forth. Um, I don't know what she's fighting back there. Jeez. Um, <laughs> she's fighting your battles for you. It's apparently. Enthusiastic about all the craziness going on. Um, I'm going to ask Valenti if she knows what any of these mean and if she knows how to open it. Alas, I, I read Gnomish, but this does this seems to just be Gnomish script. I don't understand what it's saying. Yeah, and you try to form out words, and there isn't anything that really feels like words you would know. At best, maybe it's initialisms. Um, the voice seems to come from within the console itself, not emanating from the woman in the, in the uh, in the cylinder nor do you actually see her move at all even when the vo words are are, are supposedly voiced it, the body seems to be still alas but i am no engineer my role was more field work tell me is there still a great construct here it's outside. It's fighting something. And with that, you actually see it uh, smash into uh, the thing, which it does actually draw a pretty sizable hit, and the thing flies off. Um, yeah, stay gone, asshole! And I'll duck back in when I catch a glimpse of the Cthulhu thing. It seems to fly out of view. Roughly out of view. I guess you're, if you're looking through the slit, you can still see it there. Another one of the spiders uh, kind of crawls over and resumes the work. Um, you can kind of hear the loud crashing, uh, kind of, of that lightning you were hearing before, sizzling and kind of hitting the barrier, which still seems to be active, at least for the moment. Hmm. Uh, if we describe the room to you, can you help us, maybe? Have you seen this done before? I have been witness to many going through the conversion, but I do not know how it works. <sighs> Silas is going to walk into the next room and see if it looks like Stuff's attached to here. Okay. Oh, there's a door there. I didn't see it. Cool. <laughs> I can observing. Gonna move. Can't move that guy. Oh, there we go. Uh, move the eyeballs as well. Uh, and as you peer into the other room, uh, you see. Multiple alcoves. Um, I'll move these out of the way for the moment, but um, they have other significance later. Uh,
You see multiple alcoves with uh, the, oh, I didn't really see, I didn't go through. Okay. Um, with similar cylinders to what uh, Valenti is stored in, if you will, um, each one seems to be crackling with energy, um, but within each of them you see what looks to be some sort of component, um, usually made up of simple um, geometric solids, um, different shapes within each that seem to be absorbing the energy that's going on within them. You also occasionally see uh, in the middle north one in particular, the remains of a, uh, a skeleton. It looks like it might have been someone who had been in there and for whatever reason perished. Um, you do notice uh, in the, the flashing of lights, uh, the uh, glinting on several stones that have gathered around the bottom of the uh, chamber. At the very back of the room, um, you actually see um, from the floor emerging sparks or, or emerging, um, uh, not sparks, but, but uh, bolts of this bluish power that uh, is emanating from a hole in the floor and kind of jumping to receptacles on either side, uh, two of the alcove, um, two of these alcove cylinders. Um, you follow the, the, the cables and see that they run into the grate in the middle and seem to emerge at the other, uh, or sorry, they run into the grate and run under the floor. So you can see them kind of down below presumably tying up to whatever is at the far end. Uh, outside, hey. you can see now that the spiders have gathered all around that pillar and seem to have reactivated it, and you can hear a large, uh, loud hum and hiss on the very edge of the uh, area as if power has been restored back to um, the area. A large behemoth stomps off in a different direction. I'm going to ask Dudek if he has any idea. Uh, Dudek is examining these symbols carefully and trying to, to form them, uh, trying to understand. In, in my researches of the Agenti Sagax, they did employ numerous devices of, of wondrous power. It feels almost as though this one is almost enciphered in some way, as if they've purposely made it more difficult to understand. Um, I can understand that this over here seems to represent a, a level of power, but this other one also seems to represent a level of power, as if they are interconnected and yet uh, in, in non-direct ways. For if I were to move this lever, and he just grabs one at random and moves it down a notch, um, there's a, a shift in the, in, the, uh, in the light in the room, uh, mm -hmm. and another lever pops up as if compensating for it. There's a loud crackle within the uh, space, and you actually see the body of uh, Valenti uh, kind of shake as a large arc of electricity leaps from one of the, uh, the stones embedded in a shoulder to one that's embedded in kind of the lower rib. I don't know what that did, but it seems to do something, but it's inexplicable can to I, determine if it's can actually... Can figure out if it did damage to her? <laughs> Uh, you can make a medicine check. It's a little hard right. to tell because the crystal itself is multifaceted. So imagine, if you will, like it's looking through a crystal goblet, which has some faces that are in the right way, others which are crooked. 50 total. There doesn't appear to be any surface damage. Uh, in other words, the, the, it, the lightning or the, the electricity inside only seemed to strike the stones. But definitely when it launched into where the ribs were, the body did jerk as if uh, it had gotten electric electrocuted. Or in some ways, it's like it, you, you imagine it's like a very severe case of someone poking you in the ribs. You imagine she felt that, although she doesn't say anything. 
and the body itself, the face is still uh, placid. There's no, no emotion, no motion otherwise. Uh, Valenti, did, did you feel that? I'll ask the spider face. Um, the spider face is gone now. It's kind of it, okay. one of that that group of spiders went out to to work on the tower. Um, gotcha. I don't really feel anything. I I know I lost a group of the helper spiders, but why should I have felt something? Did you did you do something? Uh, there was an arc of lightning hitting your body. But you oh. look fine, though. Oh. Um, we touched a button and it did a thing. Terribly sorry. I didn't think it was going to do that. Which further means I'm not really sure what any of this is doing. Do I recognize anything about this device? Like, Because I'm assuming I would have been around like war machines and things like that. Assuming I remember. But <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I'll allow you to make an appropriate role. What would be an appropriate role for Medric to try to to piece this together from his history or from his training or from his background? Either can this be weaponized or uh, is there any, like, religious symbols on it, I guess? Okay. If you want to try to do religion, that would fit okay. for the warlike nature of Ignis. Religion is... Oh, plus two, okay. Meh, ten. I ten. guess I'm still, like, anxious about the large... You are still outside. frightened. <laughs> you are still yeah. frightened. Uh, and that other thing fly is still flying around out there somewhere. Um, the... There's sort of a fine line between what you're seeing, seeing here in terms of the quality of the craft, the intention, the hard work that was put into this, there was definitely a dedication to it. It wasn't just a slapdash operation. This was sort of done in a form of reverence, which would feel familiar to you in terms of religion. Um, in a certain way, this does feel like the central altar of a, of a great church, for example. Um, there's also, it was also referred to at one point as a conversion chamber. And you do know that there are crucibles that the Igneans will put some of their people through um, in order for them to grow better. Most likely, the crucibles involve a lot of fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you went through a crucible like that when you were in your, your younger training. And that's when it was revealed that you are one of the Kamar, one of the blessed fire of Ignis. So this could be a crucible like that to determine or transform someone into a greater warrior? From the Ignean perspective, that would fit. But the specifics are a little bit beyond you. So it's... Well, Valenti referred to it as a conversion chamber, I think. Uh, so she'd have to be converted to something else. But Hey, Valenti, you, you mentioned the uh, big warrior outside. Is that what you'd be converted to? Not exactly. The... The constructs are capable on their own, but they are much better with a pilot. This was to make me ready to become a pilot. And outside so you can... Bring... Outside you can kind of hear that thing stomping around as uh, the strange winged thing you'll catch a glimpse of. Glimpse of. In fact, um, Googly Mook uh, will kind of move to the back of the chamber to try to move away from all of this stuff, dragging along this big, heavy pedestal that you have it, you've had it carry for a while, um, but it's definitely not uh, interested in being anywhere near that door. Um, as the booms still crash up against the edge of the, the, uh, the walls, too, but you can hear the big construct kind of moving back and forth as the big crazy uh, or big uh, shadowy billowy thing easily evades it and outdistances it and actually flies back to once more attack the spiders it's who seem to, to be not color. really able to defend themselves against this. Um. Silas is going to go over to Dudek. Is it, if she's partway through the procedure, 
Do you think there's some way I uh, there's power flowing into here from our set of crystals in the other room? There's some shapes stored in in some of these crystal chambers. Does it look like there's a what we could figure out to maybe be the next step? Like, does there appear to be something that isn't done? Um, so you think this conversion, whatever it is, is not complete? That's holding that's things up? She seemed, I think that's what she mentioned. Or yeah, along those lines. I mean, it, it's not finished. I mean, maybe something stopped things in the middle of it, so... I mean, maybe look around, see if there's something that, I mean, maybe we're just down to pressing all the buttons and seeing if something happens, but. Well, I'm a little loath to press too many more buttons, given that it had a stronger effect than I expected. And there are dozens, if not thousands of combinations. Have we tried turning it off and on again? Uh, I think that would just count as stopping completely, but, uh... It might be effective, though. Thought. Um... You know, Silas is gonna look around and see if he can... Like, is... The power that was in the other room went under the floor, and there's... Cables, or tubes coming from there into here. Hmm. I guess Silas is just trying to figure out with, I guess, Arcana what they might have been doing and what the next step might be. Okay. You notice that Gosh is kind of pawing around and and looking intently at all the different bits and pieces that are there. Every once in a while looking up and uh, at uh, the figure of Valenti, kind of cocking its head with an, with an odd sort of expression, uh, and then continuing to kind of dig around at it. You get an 18. 18? Nice. Um, the other chambers seem to hold Well, it's difficult for you to kind of fully grasp, but each of them seem to hold ideals, although the one with a body in it, you're not exactly sure what was meant to happen there. Um, and if they are all feeding together, perhaps it is all feeding into a singular being, um, feeding not only energy, but ideas, ideals, forms, greater knowledge, whatever those things contain. Um, and judging by the way the room looks it got interrupted somehow so this is definitely mid process what the end of the process is you're not sure you can always end the process immediately but what the effect will be you're not sure of that either but you have a feeling that if something could be done with those extra chambers then you can find a resolution one way or another Another one of the uh, spider creatures, or spider swarms, is picked off by the creature. Just as the um, large uh, construct manages to make it there, takes another swing, does actually connect with it. Not as strong a hit this time, however. And it promptly flies away. Silas! I'm going to sacred flame that bastard when he comes back. Without having to go outside, though. <laughs> Stylus right. casts Comprehend Languages. Okay. Uh, he Basically, it allows him to read written text if he's touching it. Mm -hmm. So he's going to start uh, basically touching the text around the place and trying to figure out what device does what. Okay. Does under Comprehend Languages, do you know what language it is you're looking at? 
Uh, it just says you understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that you hear. You understand any written language you see as long as you touch the surface. Although those are my words. That's not. Let's see what the player's guide says. I guess Annie did already identify the script as gnomish in in nature. Um, With celestial vibes as self. If if I if I make the sounds of the letters sound, it kind of sounds like celestial. <laughs> right. Uh, control weather, control water contingency. No. Uh, so I'm going to have you make a wisdom saving throw, no. Silas. Yeah, it says. Uh... Yeah, basically it says you understand the literal meaning. Okay. And it takes about one minute per page of text. Uh, does not decode secret messages in a text or glyph that's not part of a written language. Okay, uh, wisdom save? Yes. Difficulty yeah, 12. Yeah, that's, his, that's his best. And he oh, rolled wow. double one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. That was a Christmas save. Though. That was, uh, yeah, that was a Christmas save. Oops. Do you want me to re-roll it, or just take the modifier from Wisdom? Uh, I either way. Yeah, that's a terrible roll. I, I did, will give I you. I did roll a one. I will give you a chance. So roll <laughs> it uh, properly. Oh my god! Wow! I wanted to. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I didn't think it was going to get worse. I didn't think it could. Oh uh, boy! I'm thinking of using up my inspiration. Um, how important does this seem? How important does this seem? Well, as you're as you're laying hands on these and starting to run your fingers across these, you start to sense the the flow of information. It's a jumble and it's all rushing at you at once. And very okay. similar to when you had experienced true infernal, you sense the power of true celestial that is contained within these words. Yeah, I'm gonna and use my inspiration to You feel the edge of potential uh, backlash. Oh Dang my it. god. Eight. Okay. What? Uh it's not bad at first. Uh you do take five points of psychic okay. damage as it literally overflows your mind with uh with the knowledge of what's going on. I will give you some of it. Uh mm -hmm. but it's very difficult to decipher. Um it is uh a little bit incoherent as there feels like there's overlapping uh, concepts that are being embedded with individual words. You're not, you're still not sure, but you can confirm what Dudek said earlier that it does seem to be enciphered, as if they didn't want anybody to casually understand what was going on here. But it is a form of of magical inscription um, to be able to control this device and control the flow. Uh, what it appears to be doing is on a fundamental level, it is essentially rewriting a person's soul. Something that should only be manageable by gods. Uh, but they've managed to turn it into a technology. Um, in doing so, they are transforming that soul to be more, if you will, compatible. Um, which would fit also with what Valenti had said about her being ready to go into uh, a construct, to wear the armor. Um, it's doing so by pulling on different planar ideals, uh, which you also, as you also probably take a look at the tanks themselves, similar script is at the bottom of each of the tanks. Yeah. You can't really understand it because still it's enciphered, but you start to recognize similarities between some of the enciphered symbols. It's kind of like having this whole thing written in higher math and you're just starting to recognize, well, okay, this is, Alpha Gamma, and that says Alpha Gamma, that means these things are related. I still don't know mm -hmm. what it means, but I'm able to to go beyond the surface level, even though neither say Alpha Gamma, because what they're really saying is Bi Alpha, uh, Phi Gamma, and this one says Delta Alpha, uh, you know, Ypsilon. Yeah. If they rhyme, so they go together. Yeah, it's it's yeah, rhyming, that's a great way to describe it. It's more like they rhyme, and you recognize those rhymes are significant. Um, it feels as though if you were able to reactivate the process, so one option here, reactivating the process, means you could complete it. It feels as though it was stopped 
and thus it held to a safe position. You could also destroy the process. You're not sure what the outcome would be in that case. There's a lot of celestial energy contained within this device, and you don't know how much farther that power goes. You do know there's a massive, powerful shield out there holding back a, uh, a very large uh, aberration or something. Yeah. Uh, Stylus runs back to the door between the two and says, uh, Valenti, do you want this to this process to be completed, or do you want to stop it? I would rather complete my crucible, complete okay. my transformation. He runs back. He's going to focus on that that crystal that has the dead body inside it. Okay. That seems to likely be important to the situation, and he's going to focus on trying to figure out what that represented. Okay. In the meantime, you've heard the stomping around of that, that thing outside, and the creature once more is swooping around and managing to not only evade it, but uh, attack those, uh, those spiders. However, Medric, you were ready to go. Yeah, I was going to Sacred Flame its ass. All right. Which is uh, 2d8, but it's a save. What kind of save is it? Dex. Uh, I think it's Dex, yeah. Okay. 2d8, is it plus modifier or no? No. Uh, no. You are frightened. Yeah. That actually it's helps safe, it. Though. It is, but it gets... Uh... Oh, that's attack rolls. You're right. You're that. All right, Spell let's... DC is 15. Okay. I rolled a 12. Hmm. It takes seven fire. I believe it's fire damage. Yeah. Uh, be radiant damage. Radiant. Yep. Even uh, better. Which is definitely better, actually, in this case. As you see the flame of Ignis, the pillar of fire, uh, engulf it and it screech in pain. Uh, it seemed to be very effective. Uh, Excellent. And now it looks up and it sees you. Uh, oh, shit. Let's see, 10, 20. Uh, it will swoop nearby to about 10 feet of you, mm -hmm. and it's it's now gotten a little bit more indistinct as it gets closer. The weirdest thing about this creature, or not the weirdest maybe, but one of the weird things about this creature is that as it moves and goes closer to you, it actually loses detail, whereas you no longer see a distinct shape like a large bat or a bird, but instead it's almost like a, a massive shadow, a roiling pile of shadow, and it opens its mouth and screeches. Uh, let's see. From... Do I have time to cover my ears? <laughs> uh, well, that'll be what the reflection is. I will move uh, Silas into the other room because that's where he was technically at. Uh, and I think... Oh no, we are in line AOE formation. <laughs> uh... Let's see here. Uh, nope, that's not the one. So it is... Uh, still, unfortunately, where you are there, we'll be caught in this. I think everybody yeah, ends up Technically, I said that he went to the doorway, so... Oh, you know right. what? <laughs> uh, Gorgoblork. Mm -hmm. Smart as he is, is outside of the range of this effect. As a nasty screech lets forward, lets forth from this, and reverberates around the room, it disorients you. Your eyes start to swim. Uh, all of you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom, that's a plus three. I have good odds. Okay, the DC is thirteen. Wait, am I still at disadvantage? You are at disadvantage because you're already Fuck frightened it. from there's these a 12, creatures. There's and there's a five. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, and see. Uh, and I need that... to make a con save for the damage I took for concentration. Uh, hey, I just barely succeeded. Okay. Okay, didn't send it to the terminal, but I uh, rolled a 17 for a total of 26 for Dudek. Oh, there it is. Uh, and... For gosh, uh, that's not great. Let's see, wisdom. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> uh, two. Um, so that's a failure. 
All right, let's see what happens on a failure. I think it's not terrible. Uh, okay, so. Uh, do you have advantage on this, Silas? Oh, no, wait, that's a con oh. save. Where's the wisdom save? Uh, the wisdom save is up there. And if it's magic, I would, actually. That'd be a 16. A 16 the con save was just against the damage he took a little while ago. Oh, okay. Because I forgot to make a concentration check. Gotcha, gotcha. But 10 was enough. Okay. Um, so, in fact, gosh. Uh... Yeah, I think Gosh is the only one affected, and Gosh is now frightened. Oh, I was already frightened. Oh, you were okay. already frightened? So your frightened condition <laughs> extends. Nothing happens! What? Uh, your condition extends. Oh. Um, it starts over. Actually, it doesn't have a duration, the other frightened. <laughs> so. Yeah, because it's uh, like, isn't this the one... thing still outside, and I don't want to go outside because the thing is there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't uh, actually get closer to it. Maybe if I just close my eyes, it's not going to exist for a few seconds. Uh, <laughs> close this door. It's fine. It, Everything it is actually fine. is visual. <laughs> you do know this. Uh, I got all kinds of weird icons now, and I don't know what any of them do. If I just stare at the floor, I'll be fine. <laughs> um, well, I'll just put the skull on it. We'll try to remember that Gosh is frightened of the creature as it then flies uh, around. As they have a long flight speed. Um, oh, it did manage to take a swing at that. That is, uh, oh yeah, no, these are one swing hits against these spiders. So the, the last, or not the last, but another group of the spiders was able to, was, uh, clobbered. Oh, poor spiders. Uh, whoops, whoops, that's not what I want another. Hitting all the buttons. There we go. Uh, as they are still trying to work out that. Um, there is a loud clatter of lightning as the mobile armor has wandered too close to uh, the edge. Sorry, I need to find that one Whoa. there. That's another two for a save. That's not good. Um, that's this one. Oh, it takes. There we go. A chunk of damage. Uh, as lightning strikes it directly this time. Uh, okay. So, here's what happens from this point on. You're aware that this thing is basically clamoring at the edge of this area. The barrier is getting weaker, you can see it. Um, the spiders seem to be trying to focus on activating or otherwise using the Segex tower, but they keep getting picked off. Silas has now worked out that there is something to do with these six chambers, um, although one of the chambers is completely empty, uh, in order to complete, or I suppose if you wanted to, you could try to reverse the conversion that Valenti is going on going in, uh, into um, we're going to do this as a sort of extended combat race uh -oh. so there's numerous things going on at the same time some of you can be contributing to what's going on in the chamber and the work that needs to be done there uh, that chamber work essentially will be six stages. You'll need to, to pass uh, DC uh, 15 to pass through a stage. I'm going to ask you guys to, to put on your, your, uh, your, your author hats and describe <laughs> what each stage looks like, why there's some, in, some uh, in interaction with the some things that are there, and it will require a different skill each time to pass the stage. 
it doesn't have to be the same person each time. However, um, with that last flash of lightning, you hear another, uh, let's see, actually, what are they coming up? Uh, you hear, it, uh, not really hear another yet, but there is, uh, the, the shield seems to take a larger hit uh, and uh, is weakening. There is risk involved in each stage, but you can choose to try to defend the tower. You can try to use the tower. Only one of you has used it, and only briefly, and you don't know exactly what it does, so there's some figuring out time. Um, you can try to directly fight against whatever's outside. You can just hide if you want to, but mm -hmm. I will say that this is dangerous. Uh, and so we're going to do this in, in combat rounds just to kind of keep everything in motion. I'm only going to roll initiative for one thing. Um, there will be things that happen on certain initiative rolls because you're also essentially in a lair. Is that clear to everybody? So mm -hmm. give me a second. Uh, was there a question? No, I just said mm, as in it's clear. Yeah. Give me a second to reset the, uh, the uh, counter. You guys get to decide also what uh, Gosh and Dudek are doing. Gosh is currently frightened. That will make him have disadvantage on... Let me double check on which one that one is. This one will work a little differently. Uh, Okay, uh, he's frightened, so it was just a normal frightened condition, uh, which is a disability on advantage on, on ability checks and attack rolls. Keep that in mind, um, Nax. Yeah. For uh, for Medric, it does extend to ability checks as well as attack rolls. God While the fear is within <laughs> line of sight for you, that's anywhere outside of these chambers. Um, for um, for Gosh, it's if uh, it's actually anywhere because it basically was sound, so it's still reverberating in his head. Oh and, shit! And when you're frightened, yeah, you can't yeah. willingly move any closer to the source of the fear. So I'm staying in this room until it goes away. So <laughs> I will add uh, uh, Gosh and Dudek to the initiative. You guys can also roll your own initiatives. Ready? Let's see if I remember how to do this. If that comes up Select properly. Select character. Open character. Oh, oh that's bad. The bad roll. Apparently, I have to add that one manually. Oh, okay. They've. They've changed something, so it's not automatically adding turns. Despite the fact that I've got them selected, they're also rolling badly. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to add a turn for. Um, that. There are wonderful things about the interface, and I find all the bad things. There we go. <laughs> and we will roll initiative that. Okay. Everybody got their initiative in there? I believe so. If I did okay. it right. Okay. Yep. So, it begins with... Uh, okay, it actually begins with the, uh, the mass outside, uh, who I will actually put on the map now. 
So you kind of have a rough location of where this thing is just lurking on the horizon. Uh, as it attempts to strike, uh, strike the tower, actually. So, uh, that hits and does damage. So as one of these streaks of lightning rush out and kind of swirl around the tower, you can see it briefly lit up and the tower does seem to weaken. Uh, Silas, you're up next. Um, so you have choices as to what you can what you can try to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I mentioned before, he's going to try and focus on this crystal to see what its part in things was, what it needed to pass on, and basically if having a skeleton in there is a bad idea. Okay. So what is he going to do, and what skill will be necessary to do it? Again, you don't have to be necessarily the one to do the skill. Others can jump in to try to do these things. So it might be things like sleight of hand. It might be things like history, religion. All these things are possible. Um, so you may want to line it up, but it does mean that whoever's doing it is engaged with that for that round. And if mm-hmm. it fails, you'll have to try something different. You can't just do the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's, uh, I mean, he's trying to work with the language here, so I'm going to use perception. Okay, I'll accept that. DC 15. Okay. It's a 50-50 chance. We could really use a guidance in here. What was that? I I heard a guidance. <laughs> if you want to do that because it is in initiative, you would have to wait until yeah. um, no, Metric's turn. That, but would, you can... that would take up his, Max's action anyways. Um, is guidance an action or a bonus action? It might be it's bonus. An action. Okay. Uh, uh, I get a 17 anyways. A 17 is enough. So describe to me how this happens how do you solve this particular part of this this ongoing work well he's just studying what's written there it's an action though it can't just be passive uh yes i'm not saying anything he's doing a perception check that's an action Uh, no i mean i mean in terms of of what do you change or what do you do what do you actively mm -hmm. do within the scene well, okay, then this isn't going to work because I'm trying to figure something out. Okay. So that we know what to do. Uh, well, another way we can phrase this then is this will give you advantage on the, the, the doing thing or anyone else who tries advantage on the doing thing. Okay. Because, I mean, if stuff like investigation and perception aren't going to count for actions, we don't have six different skills that we can no, use for this. Everything can be an action. Um, the the motivator for the action can be the skill, but a physical thing needs to be done. You can be using perception to going, okay, I think I understand what these symbols are, therefore the switches go in this direction. Sure. If, it's, if the skeleton being in there is a bad thing, he'll take the skeleton out. If it's a good thing, he'll leave it in there. Okay. But he's trying to figure out uh, I, what needs to be done. I, I'm giving you the agency to figure out what to actually say what needs to be done. So if you decide the skeleton should not be in there, you describe how you pull the skeleton out because you've you've used perception okay. to try to figure that out. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know exactly what's what the the effect of the device is supposed to be but uh no, come up with your wildest idea and i'll tell you if I've, it's it's totally not we're going to work or we'll w- make a way to work make it work i'm going to assume that a skeleton being in there isn't supposed to be in there okay so i'll take it out i don't know okay um, you could describe how you find, uh, you know, looking around the area, looking at the description, it is not, and also remembering that there has been no organic matter whatsoever with any of these things, um, that that must be clearly the problem, and you find uh, a, drain, a drain valve, essentially, and activate the drain valve. Does that work for you? Drain the skeleton. Sure. Okay. 
when you activate the drain valve, all of the fluids that are inside and all the viscera, the, the small amount that remains of the, the body, go flushing out uh, into the main space. Uh, you manage to kind of step back, so I'm getting caught in it. And then inside that empty chamber now, you do see the sparks start to ignite as it seems that that was holding some part of this up. There's no ideal, at least not from the other ones that were represented in there, and you're not quite sure maybe what uh, what ideal should have been in there, but at least the process is flowing again. Maybe it had already gotten through this part and was just flow blocked or whatever it is, it seems to have functioned. Um, Roll me a d6, please. Okay. Five. Um, in that fluctuation of energy that happened from the chamber being essentially reset, um, you also kind of realize the lowering temporarily of the buzzing, snapping hum of the shield outside. At that moment, it takes the opportunity to try to lash out. Uh, it is going to lash out at the tower, at the the uh, armor, at the uh, one uh, set of spiders there, and I will give you an advantage on the deck save, uh, 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 Medric, but you are essentially in the open, the wide open doorway, because he blew the door off. Um, all of you will make a... Ooh, doo -doo -doo. Here, whoops, wrong screen. That just meant one of my worst saves. Oh, no. uh, it is a DC 16 dex save. Oof. So advantage just means I'm not at disadvantage. Oh, that's for everybody? That 12. is for, <laughs> nope, the people that I named. So the spider, okay. the armor, the tower fails dex saves automatically. Uh, and for, uh, for Medric, it is a 12. That is a failure. Rip. Uh, so... You'll see a number. Disregard that number for the moment. So you Just take uh, 14 necrotic damage. Ouch. Uh, as does the armor outside. Uh, doesn't quite. Oh, oh. Doesn't quite destroy those those uh, those. That swarm, but this is actually, you notice, maybe with a little bit of guilt, Medric, that the one swarm that's still working on the, on the tower, you notice that some of its members are kind of fused together and huh. uh, some of its limbs are melted down and you remember the one that you had attacked with fire and it started to melt together. This is that one remaining one. And now there's basically just one little spider with about half of it, uh, three quarters of its limbs, so four out of six limbs kind of crawling up the side of the tower to repair it. The tower you got this, bro. itself uh, is looking very rough as it takes that damage as well. And you see the you see the the, the stone encasing this tower start to fall away. The, in that moment, though, you do notice something that as the stone falls away from the central part of this tower, it's a, it's not. I say tower. It's really a pillar, about uh, three inches on a side, uh, standing about seven feet tall, comes to a point at the top. Uh, with some carved symbols on it, many of which now are completely destroyed. But you kind of notice uh, at the level where uh, Silas was was uh, pressing on it to try to activate to it to uh, to work on the the uh, the door. Um, you notice that it, it's now the the stone is is falling away, revealing a smallish cube about um, two inches on a side, uh, a sort of perfect cube of a glowing silver that seem to have been contained within the tower. Um, so that was Silas's uh, engaged action. Um, the creature goes now. I'll tell my teammates, uh, hey, there's a cube in the tower. It's really important. Um, and as you see before you, and you, you kind of recoil a little bit, um, you see that, that creature once more make a dive for the spider. The one little spider, which is remaining there. Let's see how it does. No. A hard time missing, to be honest. You got this spider. Uh, 21 to hit. Oof. Uh, and it does more than the one remaining hit point oh. <laughs> that that poor guy had. Uh, and kind of 
dashes it away. There is no one defending that tower at the moment as it continues to kind of swoop and then f and then fly uh, off. Um, Tower's going to need defending. Yeah. Glowing, <laughs> glowing silvery cube? Get me that cube. I'll need his leg, that cube. Um, and I realize I don't have that on the initiative, so I'm going to go and add an initiative for her. Oh, I forgot. Gorgle Blort goes uh, right after I do. Uh, he's having a hard time doing anything right now, uh, given that he can't really move anywhere. Uh... Why can't he move anywhere? He's frightened of the creature frightened outside. Because he's on the far end of the room. I thought Gosh was no, that was Gosh. Uh, oh, right. He was... Yeah, that's yeah, right. Gogolbor Sorry. He, out of the range. he made it out of the, yeah. out of the range. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, I'll oh, be back uh, in a uh, I yell seconds. at... Uh, I just have to open the draft room. Yeah, I yell at the fish man to go help defend the front door. I drop the uh, pedestal and go defend the front door. So um, he'll just move up here next to Medric. Okay. Um... Sort these. Not the way I wanted. There we go. All right. Uh, the. Uh, yep. So he wasn't subjected to that. Oh, if he's actually standing in the door, he would have to make that dex check against the uh, the necrotic arms. Because uh, oh, that would have happened. Thing. Yeah. Well, you know, it it happened, but it would have happened after he had moved. Okay. Sure. What well, was that? A dex check? That was a dex check. Yep. Sixteen. Uh, no creatures. Hmm. I think the stats are under the spell. Mm -hmm. oh, Nineteen. Succeeded. So he takes seven points of necrotic damage. Takes half. All right. Uh, hmm. I think the construct, seeing that no spiders are defending, will actually start to lumber its way back towards the tower. But it can't get... Uh, actually, it'll run, so it jogs to get there. Clunk, 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 clunk. It doesn't seem to have any ability to do anything with the tower, but it feels like it's defending it. Good. Uh, Gosh. It's standing is, in front of it. What is Gosh going to do? Who would like he's to going to be scared. Uh, he is scared, so he's not going to jump out to the outside. Could he maybe assist Silas with whatever he's doing? Uh, if Silas is the one doing it. Remember, it doesn't have to be Silas. Anybody can go in there and try things. But you, you mentioned he was looking at the ceiling and stuff earlier. Does he look like he knows what's going on? Or? He was, he like all the rest of you, he was studying the symbols and trying to figure out what they were. He might have different knowledge, but he hasn't said anything okay. telepathically. Uh, and he was looking at her, uh, not the ceiling. He's looking at Valenti and having an, uh, an odd tilt of the head. So, would you so like who Gosh is controlling Gosh anyway? Could we you just are. have him? All like... of you are. Okay. If he's figuring anything out, he can uh, probably tell us telepathically because that would be useful. <laughs> okay. So you want to have him make a figuring things out roll? Yeah. Um. Keep switching machines here. Uh, okay, figuring out things roll. We'll call that what? An arcana roll? Does that sound like what you want him to do? How about investigation? Whichever one between uh, arcana and investigation is higher is in his stats. Well, <laughs> I've got a pretty high arcana and I'd like a chance to use it. So if okay. you can do investigation, I'm crappy at that. Um, gotcha. This is him just figuring stuff out in the room. He's not taking an action against the things. That is strictly okay. for PCs. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, it does not have okay. investigation. Um, he can do which, his best. I believe in you, Gosh. 
investigation is an int based so let's roll the int see what we get he's reasonably smart he got a nat 20 for a 21 nice okay um let's see i think you'll look at his dudek is there uh medrick is there gorgor blork is there probably not gonna help those guys oh wait annie's right there annie was hiding in plain sight um, i am standing in front of the thing yeah so uh he will kind of look at you with his one baleful eye um and let's see uh it was investigation so um I can also with the ring. It specifically is that. Um, oh. oh, that's right. He ah. can't talk to you. <laughs> no, he can. If you because allow, it. yeah. I can allow it. Okay. People can talk to me to me telepathically if I allow it. Okay. So you see him staring at you and seems to be trying to indicate that he's saying something, and you go, "Okay, I'll allow it." Yeah, basically. And so midway through a sentence, um, you get the string of thoughts. I think if we can match symbols, we can moderate here what happens in there. And a little bit more explanation. He, just as, as um, um, Silas has kind of realized the connections between the chambers and some of the controls here, he's come up with a similar conclusion, but also that if he manipulates some of the controls on this side, he should be able to assist or anybody should be able to assist what's going on in the other room. Cool. Okay. Um, so you don't have to be in that room necessarily to assist. However, it will be a roll to try to figure out if you do the right thing. Okay. Um, a one on that roll will make it harder, but most uh, things over like a 15 will make it easier, which is advantage. Okay. All right, that's Gosh. Now with this filled with this knowledge and the dire situation out front, what does Annie do? Um, I'm going to ask Silas if there are any symbols that he saw on, because he was looking at the one out here. Are there any similar symbols in there? Um, he'll say if he saw any, yeah. The answer is yes. Um, how you describe complex symbols is a little bit more than just a few seconds of conversation. Um, okay. So um, the answer is at least a yes. He's definitely seen comparative symbols between there and, and out here. Okay. I am going to... Okay, I'm going to go into here. I'm going to take a look to see what symbols I can see in here. I'm gonna, if, if I need to dash as my bonus action, I will. And then I'll go back and try to maneuver stuff with that. Okay. Um, I'd say that would be either perception, investigation, that kind of a role, to basically go in, memorize the symbol, and then come back out, but we're not going to roll it right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to roll it when you try to help. Okay. To see if you did actually remember the right symbol. Now, could I, could I roll history good. for that, where it's a memory thing? Um, yeah, history could be possible. Okay. But it'll so specifically will... apply to this one chamber when that chamber is attempted. This one? Okay. Perfect. And I'll go and try to find the same symbol on the on the on the dashboard over here. Okay. I'll put these red circles in this space just to indicate that you've basically um, completed that element of it. So it will take you around the room to do all of them. All right. I believe that's Annie's turn. What would you like Dudek to try to do? And, and I'll also vocalize what Gosh said to me. Okay. 
What would you collectively like Dudek to do? Um, come over, come into this room and hold an action to help whoever's going next. <laughs> um, well, he, he, where do you want him? Because he can't move after he's moved. Yeah, come into this room. <laughs> Anywhere in particular? Uh, like up by this one, I guess. Okay. The one that Annie was looking at. Right. Um, I'm here to help. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'll help. Should I just start None pressing things? None of us things? know what we're doing, so we're all in the same boat. Should I just start pressing things and see what happens again? Well, actually, we can't have two people help in a roll anyways. That's right. Uh, maybe have him check out the next one, like down here. Okay. It looks familiar. All of them look familiar at this point, mind you, but if I only had time to study this. That is... Well, we've got three minutes. Maybe. <laughs> that is two decks turn. Medric, you see yeah. now that the the big uh, uh, the big construct has taken up a defensive position at the at the tower, but it doesn't really like it's not working on the tower like the others were. The others weren't really defensive. They seem to be doing something, um, either to maintain it or what. But the tower is taking a pretty mighty hit at this point. You can see just on the edge of your vision the the uh, creature responsible for your fear, and it stops you from moving any further out into this area. You can also see far across the way the other creature, which more recently has become an object of fear for you. I guess more beneficially, you can't be afraid. More, you can't be even more afraid. You're just terrified. It's like fuck this. I want to go home. I want to go in the arms in the arm, in, in the arms of Agnes and just like we're like, retreating fire. I mean, you know where there's a uh, a portal. Mm -hmm. Not really sure how to activate it, but you know there's a portal there. He'd have to go out of here in order to get to it, though. Yeah. True. Or if he has teleports and stuff, he might be able to make it there. But yeah, generally, it's not a great plan, but. So when, in can't doubt, move. Yeah, when in doubt, bring in the fire. I mean, there is that. So we can't move towards uh, the thing that the you're afraid, afraid of. of. Yeah. But I, I might be able to zap the flying one from here. I think your reach can I, get there. That would be. Uh, I think your reach can hit both of them, actually. Depending on what you're using, yeah. Well, remember that there is still a barrier around the rocks. It's just on the other side of the barrier. Anything you oh, fire okay. would have to go through the barrier. You're not sure what the consequences of that would be? Yeah, I'd probably just Sacred Flame the flying one. Okay, that was a deck save again? It was. All right. Two. Dexterity saving throw. <coughs> uh, Wait, is it 2d8 or 3d8 for a Sacred Flame at my level? Uh, uh, we're level 10, so two. Okay. It got a 24. Oh, yeah, that's that's a save. So this time it seems to be wise to your... your Pillar of Ignis. Womp. All right. And then I'll tuck back into the room, I guess. <laughs> okay. Because there be scaries outside. Um, technically, I think you're closer to them, though. Oh, right. I, well, I once he moves windowsless. back, he can't. Oh, no, yeah, I there's windows in the Yeah. Yeah, he's literally right. standing in front of the window and can see this pulsing, gyrating, terrible thing of his nightmares just right outside. Um, if you want to move in a different direction, you certainly can. Back or to the left, I guess, to the west. Gorgal Blark, you got this. <laughs> uh, as Gorgal Blark is now. I have now, faith in you, Gorgal Blark. The front of the organization. Uh, so I just move the eyeball. New mascot. I'll just go here. <laughs> and assist with uh, the smart people. Okay. So all of hey, you are uh, now you on on room duty. And who knows what's happening out there. Uh, okay. On initiative 20. I show up here and it's like, uh, I have no idea what's going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's not happening. That's not happening. Uh, that's not happening. Okay. Uh, outside. 
Hmm, okay. Uh, you hear a massive explosion, but not a rumbling one so much as a ripping apart, uh, a ripping uh -oh. explosion as um, you see the, the, the brightness of the barrier kind of flash and little tendrils of, well, you don't really see it, but Gorgol Blork, does Gorgol Blork even speak a language? <laughs> you you uh, hear Gorgol he Blork go, Gorgoblor oh, Yeah, he oh. probably speaks uh, Abyssal. Okay, uh, and you have... You understand anything Silas has. Yeah, well, in Silas you have, uh, I don't know if you're still concentrating on, on uh, comprehend languages, but you'd actually understand... Uh, uh, for the rest of you, it comes out as uh, For you, Silas, it comes out as Oh, crap. Is it really supposed to tear open like that? Uh, and that is initi saying? initiative 20. Um, Silas. You feel time Dang. running out. But at least all of you are in the same room. No, Annie's not. Nope. Oh, you're, that's true. The pair of chambers, I guess. I, I consider it all one space. Um. So okay. So what was in this crystal? Um, uh, I described it as one of the uh, sort of idealistic primal shapes. You're feel free 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 to interpret that. Again, I'm giving you the agency to figure out what's in there and what you can do with it, and how you can transform it. What the effort is. Okay. okay, so the one here was a primal shape. Was one down here a shape as well? Yeah, the four remaining lit up ones are primal shapes. The empty one is an empty one. And the empty one's the red dot. Uh, no, the, the, the uh, ignore the, these red dots for the moment. It is this empty space here. Okay. The red dots are going to signify that you finished one. Yeah. Uh, so the empty space is just like, is it a crystal thing that's empty or is there just nothing there? Uh, we're going to say it's a crystal thing that's empty. So there's no spark okay. going through it, nothing in it at all. Um, well, uh, I'm... Hmm. This is the one that Annie looked at. Does Marie have any ideas of what we could could be in here? Um, I don't know. Um, because I was looking to see if there was any symbols that that cord correspond. I was specifically looking for for that. Yeah. To correspond it to the, the dashboard over on the other side. Mm -hmm. And you're pretty sure you found them, but we'll see what happens when you roll. Okay. But, but as a player, feel free, all three of you, to contribute to the well, idea of, hey, what sort of weird thing can we be doing here? Uh, actually, I'm going to turn it on and off again and tell <laughs> Annie to hit the button. Okay. Uh, what what kind of skill is that going to turn into? Um, okay, well, question. If I use a skill, is that going to lock it out for someone else? That's right. Basically, the creative solution okay. will only work once, so you can just turn them all off and back on again, for example. No, but I mean, it. if if I use sleight of hand, then nobody else can use sleight of hand. Yes. Okay. Uh... uh. Well... If I'm getting help on this, then uh, I guess investigation. I'm gonna find out where the where the fuse is, and or I'm gonna find the, where the circuit breaker is, and turn it off and turn it on. Okay. And say ready to go. Before you roll, now it's time for Annie to see if she did remember the symbol correctly. And you are gonna try a history roll for this. This one, this can be duplicated. That's an 18. Cast guidance on Silas. Uh, you uh, no, because it's not your turn. Okay. 
Um, that would have been a good thing to do maybe at the end of the last turn. So yes, uh, Annie kind of goes, okay, uh, describe the, the, the symbol. Describe the pair of symbols that you recognize. Make them as weird as you like. I don't know. It's some type of star and some type of squiggly line up. Okay, and how does how does uh, Annie remember that? What's the what's the mnemonic she's using, or is she remembering a, a flag she saw once, or a squiggle doodle star. she did once? <laughs> squiggle star. She's just going squiggle star, squir, squiggle star. Squiggle okay. Star. So you seem to be lined up to press certain things on the console at the same time. Now Three, the investigation two, to go. Okay. One. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, so I do have advantage. You do have advantage. Yes. Oh, that's that's good because my investigation is not super good <laughs> uh, hey that is a success hey, so you managed to find uh, kind of the intake uh, valve both for the liquid and for the the power it seems to be all worked into one seems kind of dangerous to have all that much power around liquid but apparently it works on different physics you call out three Two, one, at the same time, Annie presses certain parts of the console. You feel them give way. Um, you know, they look like symbols, but they also give way properly. Uh, and it seems to cut off the output from that chamber. Uh, Annie, you see the figure of Valenti kind of shudder from that side, uh, almost as though there was a wave or a bubble almost of, of power that, that shifted around moving the body as you also kind of realize it is just free floating there's nothing really binding it except for the little bits of electricity and the little sparks one of the sparks in, in fact by one of her ankles just goes out and then there's that nervous moment where you go okay now turn it back on and you haul on this uh this uh lever and it sticks a little bit but then you put a little bit more elbow grease into it realize it's a turny uh and then it's turn the, not push yeah, it's a turn, not mm -hmm. push. And the the uh, the chamber once more it, it went dark. It now reignites with a burst of of, uh, of light. The symbol in the middle of that um, what what primal symbol or what primal shape is this uh, Silas that's in this particular one? Um, it is a ring. Okay, it's a circle. Uh, but it a, is an empty circle. Okay. Uh, or a, it's a three-dimensional one, so a cylinder, basically, um, thin cylinder, um, starts to spin and gather up that energy, which then you see, uh, as you see it kind of slowly creep through the tube, uh, Annie, you see your moment to basically unpress those buttons, and then there's a little bit of a spark, a little bit of a gap spark, if you will, uh, into the tube as that lights up. Uh, and again, the body seems to shake, but there's no response vocally from Valenti. Uh, that is a second one uh, reactivated. Now, please roll me a d6. Two. Okay. Um, during that moment of, of power loss, um, there's a little bit of an extra, an extra hum in the, the, the shield itself as energy was momentarily drained from it when the restart happened. And you see a single solitary uh, uh, lightning strike go, uh, trying to move around the construct, doesn't really want to get the construct, just focused on the tower itself. Uh, let's see if we have... Do, do, do. Uh, this one, a hit roll. Ah, but misses. It says claw. I'm just using a different one. I guess you probably can't see it anyway. I'm just using instead of recycling or creating new new attack rolls. But it manages to miss, trying not to get uh, overwhelmed as the black lightning uh, skitters across and kind of knocks some stones down off of the chamber containing the travel uh, the travel chamber. Hopefully not affecting the travel chamber too much. Um. That is Silas's engagement. Um, uh. Now, for the end of his turn, Silas uh, runs to the doorway and yells out to Glurgle Blork, uh, get me that glowing silver cube from the tower that uh, that Medrick mentioned. And then Glurgle Blork takes his turn. Okay. 
Um, I'm assuming his movement's enough to get out there. What is his movement? 30, probably? Or 20? Um, If you do summon the entities, 30 feet. 30 feet, okay. So he's got enough to pop out to this thing. Yeah, I can't seem to actually... Oh, no. I just moved him, sorry, but... Okay. So let's put him up where the tower... Yep. Uh, Okay. Um, Have him make a strength check, athletics, if he's got it, as he tries to pull the stone out. Yeah, there's no skills associated with them, so just strength of plus three. Okay. That's a seven. Yeah, unfortunately, it's still embedded enough in stone that he's not actually able to remove it. Uh, You do... um, yeah, you can kind of just make... Well, the front door is wide open, so there's a big gap there, so you can see. And Gorgo Blork also notices as the construct looks at him as something that seems to be attacking the stone, the tower. Um, mm. Is Gorgo Blork staying there? Yep, I told him to get the okay. the uh, cube for me, so he's, he's my servant. He's going to keep getting that cube. All right. Uh, this thing now. What is it going to do? And I will be back in a minute. Sure. So is it washroom break time? I think I'd also use a washroom break. Uh, we can take five if that works. I think that uh, Annie's already taken five. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, everybody else can take five. Uh, I will vamp for a moment. How about that? All right. So you can watch hey, this back later and discover mm-hmm. all the secrets I've spilled. And... All right. Because uh, I don't really have a pause. Yep, no problem. No problem. Head on out. I don't really have a pause screen here, so um, please forgive the players being absent for the moment. Uh, I'll give the spiel for this. This uh, game has been going on. This particular second season is 70 episodes long so far. You can find all of those at youtube.com slash encaf1. You can look for the uh, LOTDI. I'm just vamping as we went to a, a, a bathroom break. So, <laughs> um, it's been a while. I needed to go get some painkillers because my incision was starting to bother me. No, no worries, no worries. Um, we, I guess we, we don't really do a lot of bathroom breaks. We don't schedule anything, uh, but that's fine. Everybody seemed to have uh, an issue at the same time. As I was just sort of saying, uh, this has been the second session or second um, second campaign in this world. Um, do you remember how many episodes the first campaign reached? You can probably look I it up. I don't, but I think I checked and it was like 65. I think we passed it just a little while ago, which is amazing to me. Yeah. Um, the sessions used to be a little bit longer, so I, that might be a, another account because it felt like it went on for several years. This one has been going on for three years, though. Um, we've had... Yeah, because the first one was, it started in 2016, and we stopped during the pandemic. And we played weekly, except for in the summer sometimes, it, because of the heat and stuff. Right. Um, But yeah, no, we we got fair. We had played that one for like four or five years. So we're we we're, we're in the fourth year for this this campaign then too. Yeah. Oh, wow. So in the other game, we also did those twelve hour sessions. Sometimes we had multiple sessions in a week during like holidays and stuff. Right, right. Yeah, it's harder to do that these days. It feels like yep. until, I don't know how I managed to do it then. Mind you, uh, some very long involved uh, combats. I think is one of the, one of the ways. Plus, I, I used to have the three D stuff set up on my uh, table back when yep. we were playing in person. So um, I'm hoping the maps. Uh, this is a, a map that I, I I got from one of the Patreons I follow. Um, mm-hmm. Plus, I've of course added lighting to it. Um, I think I'm finally getting the hang of lighting. Plus, the Roll Twenties lighting is getting better. Yeah. Um, just to give a little bit of extra dramaticness to the to the scene. Yep, um, no, it, it looks really nice. And uh Yeah, this 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 uh this session it, it is relying on you guys to come up with some creative solutions because I thought that'd be okay. kind of fun. So um feel free to to jump in. And again, you can make it as outrageous as you like. All I can say potentially is that's no or that's gonna be hard. Uh but I'm I'm fascinated to see what you guys come up with. Um this is your chance to edit a part of the world which doesn't exist anymore because this this outpost is unique. Um, and uh, very hard to get to. 
So uh, we'll still wait a moment for uh, for Pat to get back. Just talking a little bit about how it's been almost four years in this campaign. It was almost four mm -hmm. years in the previous campaign. Slightly more sessions, but maybe more time in the other one because we had longer sessions. Yep. And we started filming three years into the into the game as well. Was it three years in? Wow. Well. Two, two, three years in. Yeah. At least. And of course, we had two other players, um, one for a while at Adam. Um, actually, we had, were both Adams playing in this game? Or only, uh, I think, no, I don't only think so. one Adam. Yeah. Um, no, one and, Adam. And uh, one Jody, uh, who unfortunately couldn't join us for the online version of this game. Um, yep. But, uh, you know, three is not a bad number. I, I think four would be something I'd like to see, but uh, you guys have made plenty of mischief on your own. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are having fun. I, I, I will, I will ask, uh, or you can, you can think about it. You don't have to answer this right now, but I, I've asked this before about there's particular things you want to get back to. We've left a lot of plot lines in the in the wake over time, and of course, um, there have been some gaps in uh, in our uh, playing from time to time. But if there are plot lines or other things to get back to, um, I do have some stuff that I want to do with the Ignians, for example. Um, there's a little bit more that I have planned already for Annie. Um, mm -hmm. Some weird stuff in the background. Of course, Silas has the main quest that, that uh, Silas is on. Um, and I'll continue to put uh, road down with obstacles <laughs> to get towards <laughs> all of these things. So many obstacles. <laughs> well, it feels like that's my job, right? You know, <laughs> it's like, it is indeed. <laughs> how do I give you the opportunity to do something and how do I make it harder <laughs> to do something? Oh, let's see here. But uh, now I'm trying different things with different kinds of puzzles and different kinds of solutions. Um, this, for example, is not a straight up fight, although you can engage it like a straight up fight. Um, but it's also a, you know, find creative solutions and do them. Um, different positioning that you can put in for that, different ways to help people. And of course, you're three NPCs now, although uh, Google Blork is kind of the marginalist of NPCs. <laughs> Technically four, but Valenti's not really in a position, quite literally, to help. Yeah. Well, she can provide okay. information, assuming she knows stuff. <laughs> Actually, okay. if I'm looking at, uh, at Legends of Omasha... Um, playlist. We uh, we ended three years ago on episode forty six for filmed episodes. Okay, but there were at least oh, there were years before. Right, right. Well, we've we've come a long way. Yep. All right, um, I think now it's this thing's turn to try to do something as we return back into it. Uh, and I think that only one of them has the initiative. So uh, both the flying one, let's see. I think the flying one is gonna try to harass the construct. Actually, hmm. I don't really want to get that much. Actually, in this space, it is going to fly around and try to hide. Uh, that is a 23, so it successfully hides. And then we'll maneuver through the shadows to try to strike at the armor. But it won't see it coming. Uh, and it will use both of its attacks in this sense. Uh, first one. 16. Uh, not enough. Its tough, thick exterior manages to prevent it from being damaged. 
Oh, wait, I got the wrong one. Well, same roll. Uh, all right, so it manages to not successfully... Um, oh, wait, no, it didn't roll with advantage. It's supposed to. Roll it again. 22, that is a successful hit. Wah, wah. Or... Uh, huh, it might be immune to that kind of damage. It is immune to psychic damage. Well, there you go. Not nearly as bad for that. But the construct, machine. the construct does take a hit. Uh, and it will use its flyby ability to just move just out of the range of its hit. Meanwhile, uh, from beyond the area, again, uh, at this point, I guess Silas and Medric. Mm -hmm. A little bit of Annie, I think, can see just the concentrated strike directly on the construct itself uh, as uh, the, the bolt of black lightning uh, strikes outward. Uh, that is enough to hit it. A very minimal amount of damage, though, as if this thing was designed to take a lot of damage. Uh, that there is enough. their turn. Uh, it's Valenti's turn, which represents also the NPCs under her control, which at this point is just the armor. Uh, the armor is concerned, but not so much with things attacking it as so much as with the, the things attacking the tower. Like it has very simple instructions, protect the tower. Uh, and it did have something that tried to hit the tower. So it will try to hit Google Blork. Uh, oh, no. Yo. It's uh, one slam attack. So to hit the Google Blork, that is a 27 to hit Google Blork. I think that probably hits. Okay, what's the damage? Uh, damage is 21 bludgeoning damage. Uh, how is Google Blork doing? Is it basically bashes on him? They're still standing. Awesome. Uh, but now, unfortunately, allies have gotten confused. Um, that is the only thing left under her control. All the spiders are gone. Uh, Gosh, what is Gosh going to do? Gosh will attempt to probably help because he's more useful inside. Well, he, he, he can't be of any use outside because he's scared. So he will go in the other room, I guess. Okay. Unless anybody else has any... Or would he be more useful here? Or... He hasn't seen the other room yet. Um, miss... No idea. Uh, Gosh is so not will... was just at the console. He'd never gone anywhere else. So, so he will do a figure things out role in here, I guess. So let's get a little more specific than that. Um, I give the other eye more vision. Uh, he is kind of coming into. He's kind of standing in the middle of the room right now. Mm -hmm. Is he going to look at something in particular? One of those ones that's there, or there is a grating with power lines running underneath. What is Gosh going to have a have a look at? To see if there's a way to, I don't know, like complete the transformation or whatever. But you guys already kind of know that. Um, you know that if, if everything is, is back up and working, it should complete the uh, conversion. Did they have Gosh go over to, like, one of the, like, the power draining crystals and mm -hmm. see if he can help there whenever one of us gets to it? Okay. Okay. What kind of a role is it going to try to do to help out? He seems to be good at Arcana. This is Arcane stuff, so... That's true. Be a good one. Okay, you want to have him roll Arcana? I can do that. All right. Gosh, smart. Gosh, roll the one. <laughs> Gosh, not smart. I saw a total of four, unfortunately. Uh, as Gosh is kind of looking at it, going, uh, you just sort of you see him shrug and start to, to mm -hmm. sort of very carefully poke over the things. You feel like he'd just gotten a handle on the console, and now like this is different. This is very different. Also, maybe a little bit... Uh, actually, sorry, he's also uh, still frightened. 
Um, so that would have been with disadvantage anyway, but um, still quick and in his boots. Yeah, every, the 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 power, the sheer sparks, or arcs of electric electrical, magical power are also one of those things where, I mean, I don't know if you ever stood next to a Tesla coil, but its little random sparks just drive me up the wall. So I imagine mm -hmm. it's having a similar, he's having a similar uh, moment, unfortunately. Uh, Annie. Let's hope uh, now that you are the only one left in the outer chamber with a broad, wide-open door. Uh, you saw the thing swoop at the giant construct. You don't know if it saw you, but it seemed to not be very effective against that construct, at least. Okay. And can I see the... The thing is, is it still in the doorway line of sight? Um, see the the flying thing? Yeah. 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 It's just on almost straight north of you, I think. You can just make it out on the other side. Although it's hard to see because most of this is not lit area. Which will make it harder to target if you needed to. Let me see here. It's still with my dark vision. Okay. So that's good. Um. Oh, you got your I'm goggles going right. To... Oh. What? You have your goggles right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I'm going to shoot from. I'm going to shoot the, the creature to try to get it to leave the construct alone, I think. Okay. Actually, no. I'm I'm going to continue. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, basically, assess what the situation is here and to find the matching one on this side. Basically, I'm pressing buttons. Okay. So you're going to go back into the other chamber to find one to examine? Yep. Okay. Which, which one do we which one do we want to do do next? I'm gonna find the button on the other console. Uh I'd say one of the two power ones here at the back end. Okay. I'll go do this one. I'll take take a look, see what's going on. So you would have had to run to get in there, I think. Uh yeah, I was what was I? He kind of moved in to look out the door as well, so. Yep. Um, so that would be 35 I can dash as a bonus. So yep. It would be no problem to get. Almost all the way back, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. And again, when it comes time to check that one, just remember which one it was. And yep. we will uh, make the roll at that point. Uh, okay. It is this one. And the symbol is... A square with a dot in the middle, and then a circle with a line on top. Okay. Um, square dot, circle dot, circle school. Wait, what? Circle, straight line. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dudek is dutifully taking a look at this. Uh, I don't think he did pretty well last time he was looking at it, but... What would you like Dudek to do? Um, again, I guess just, like, analyze it, uh, like Arcana or Investigation or something for whoever gets over there next. Okay. Uh, which is it? Let's go with Arcana. It's all okay. magic here, so. Let me see if I can make more sense of this. Um, let me see here. Doesn't have a lot of spells. Nothing that would help in this case, so. All right. Uh, Arcana it is. 
see how he does with this one. A total of 19. Yes. Nice. So uh, he's starting to, to piece together what the different symbols look like uh, and trying to find these similarities. I, I think this one refers to... Uh, it could be enlightenment or maybe sight or possibly insight or or maybe psychology uh it might be family it's still a little vague to me but i think i'm working something out here so he can assist someone working on that one that is dudex turn medric you're up all right i'm wondering if i can still see the thing outside uh, from there, no. And I can't move closer towards it. Crap, okay. You're well, still you frightened because of the other creature, but you're not frightened, at least, of that that particular mm. one. Okay. Stuck in here with us. I'm gonna... So who's next to... So Silas is next to do an action? Uh, he seems I'll like he's Silas. ready to go. Uh, what are you doing? Yes. Oh, yeah, trying to figure out how to make all the wires connect up. Well, Ignis blesses you in, in this endeavor, and I'll cast guidance on Silas. There you go. We... <laughs> Is that a bonus or an action? Action. I think it's an action. That's okay. why I couldn't cast it last turn. Okay. So a little bit of a uh, flame flows over um, Silas. I think you're not causing people to burn with a low-level spell still, right? No. Okay. Unless it's a sacred flame, but I'm not sacred flame. So well, that's, that's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it was a side effect of Ignis's power that uh, flame was leaking out. But it, it right, probably right. still kind of flows over uh, Silas. It doesn't affect it you warm, anymore. but not burning. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's kind of like, it's like a magic trick, really. You know how the magic ones, they turn it into a, they burn a, a candle, or burn a, um, a um, not candle, they burn a card, like they'll just toss mm -hmm. it up and it just burns and burns away. It's kind of like that, it's like, whoosh, and then it's, you feel better, but you did have someone just throw a flaming piece of paper at you, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. All okay. right, would you like to move? Uh, do you need to be anywhere? I'll ask Silas. Um, can't think of anything specific. I mean, kind of got people lined up at a couple of spots. I, I mean, that's kind of all I've got in mind. Right, I'll go here so I can hit like buttons on either one of the tanks next to me. Well, both of those Ooh, have those been are already reset. Completed. Oh, okay. So there's this one, this one. Okay. And ah, gotcha. this one. The turn order window is over that one. I'll go here. Yeah, no, so there one is a, there's an empty one. There's one oh, in each that of the corners. Empty uh, the empty one is still part of it. It's not active. Yeah. Okay. I have an but idea. But that's the one for with the, the square ones. dot circle line. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Silas, you are indeed up. Um. Okay. Uh... Oh, sorry. Uh, it was a, a new round. Um, so the attacks continue. Yeah. And this time... Uh, I think just going to wail away at this armor because it's kind of blocking his view. And that's rude. So it will attempt to unblock the view. Uh, nat 20. Um, so that was terrible, but it was still a number of points of necrotic damage. Uh, 19 points of necrotic damage. So at this point, um, although most of you can't really see it, um, the strikes are coming regularly at that armor, and it does look like it's weakening. Um, it's kind of staggering a little bit on its feet, but it's full intent. Actually, from where you are, uh, Silas, you can see that it actually has its back 
to the the creature on the edge of the void uh, in his intent on Gorbulglurk, as if it's, or Google Blurk, as if it is not uh, entirely happy with what it's trying to do. Now it is your turn. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I will, uh, I will go over to where Dudek is and, uh, This one, I think, will be a triangle, like a three-sided pyramid. Okay. And, uh... It's a D4. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Okay. I guess I'm going to fiddle with the connections. Okay. Uh, trying to uh, basically, I'm assuming something is stopping this one from getting through. So I'm going to try, I'm going to use sleight of hand to uh, try to fix the connections and complete the wiring, so to speak. Okay. Uh, you will have advantage because uh, what uh, Dudek has been able to figure out about the symbols around where the, the things interconnect, it's like, I think, I think that one's mostly power. This one is mostly goo, but I could have those backwards because I seem about the same size on this one. Huh, interesting. Okay, and I also have guidance. That's needed. true. Uh, mm -hmm. But thanks to advantage, I got a 20. <laughs> nice. As you're kind of fiddling around with them, you can actually feel the energy kind of surging around, and you notice that there's uh, a bit of a gap in one of the tubes, and the wires or the, the cords inside are exposed, and it sparks out, gives you a little jolt on the fingers, but you feel like if you had, if you had handled it a little bit differently, um, you would have had a full-on jolt of this power. But indeed, it does seem to... Uh, uh, surge with power on the inside of the tube the the um the pyramid starts to spin in an almost uh infinity h8 uh uh eight pattern on the side please roll me a d6 uh, six four four roll wow. me a d6 again please Six. Okay. I will you get blasted for six damage. I need damage. a moment. Because uh, I didn't have six prepared. Like that. So We have accidentally summoned six Cthulhu's. Goodbye, um, Six times frightened. That one. That one. There we go. Uh, they will be there. Oh, actually, these are all going to appear at the same spot, but I'll be moving them around. It's just convenient to do it all at once. Um, as you hear the uh, power resurge in this one, once again, there's that familiar deepening um, hum of, uh, of a shift in what comes from the shield itself. And you almost feel like those... Uh, those rifts that were forming in it before have gotten larger. Um, and I don't think we have a lot of time left. Here, there. Um, as moving through the wall here. And anyone looking into the other room would also notice something similar moving through. A shadow seems to creep inward yes. and take on a humanoid form uh, and be um, be uh, uh, a threatening shape. It has sort of gilt silver edges, or at least they look silver. Uh, again, imagine the sort of outlining effect of the dark saber is the uh, effect I'm going for. Uh, 
as that seems to appear. And you hear as it kind of moves through this sort of uh, sharp staticky sound as it moves through the solid wall. Uh, and you can hear that sound in other places as well. Uh, as I will nope, add nope, them nope, on nope. to the initiative. Uh, no, I still have... Uh... Well, they, uh, they appear instantly, but they aren't doing anything yeah, yet. Um, uh, oh, sorry, I thought you were going on to the next initiative. No, I just got to figure out um, when they're going to get their next effect. Or get their next, uh, get their action, sorry. Oh, there it is, roll initiative, didn't show up. Silas will move back to the doorway, okay. so there. After that... Conveniently, they're at the end of the initiative. That works out. Okay. Um, and Gorgle Blork will uh, attempt to grab that uh, cube. Okay. Unless it's, uh, unless there's a different kind of action, it's just, again, a straight-up strength roll to try to yank it out of the stone mm -hmm. that remains. It is very difficult. Oof. Wow. Damn. Yeah. No, it's... Still working away at it. As he's trying to do this, uh, he actually ends up scraping his hand and kind of pulling his finger back with a little bit of blood. No damage, effectively, but um, kind of found himself just a sharp spike. Or maybe it was a bit of power within. Only Gorgo Blork and his hairdresser know for sure. They know the truth. <laughs> uh, that's it for me. Okay, that's Silas. Now, uh, this thing will try... Um, to do its work. Uh, it doesn't consider the Gorgoblork to be an enemy, so it's going to ignore that for the moment. And... I think it's going to try to do the stealth trick again, the flying one. Uh, I will give a disadvantage on the stealth because it's trying to literally hide in the same place twice. That's not a dis well, disadvantage was the 15. Um, which is, I believe... Uh, lower than its passive, or higher than its passive perception. So it is successful in doing the same thing twice and then trying to make a flyby. But once again, 15 is not enough. And it moves... And then does continue its flyby afterwards to move out of the way uh, once more. Uh, lightning strike from the, the large guy. He doesn't have a lot of particular things he can do from this distance. Uh, sorry, no, he'll strike. No, he'll strike at the, the shield itself. Uh, that's a lot easier to hit. Uh, so he does hit the shield. And the shield, the shield doesn't take psychic damage, so... Uh, all right, the shield is weakening. Still seems to hold for the moment. No. Valenti. Um, unfortunately, the construct, simple being that it is, all by itself, doesn't understand what to do differently. Um, if you were to tell Valenti, maybe she could intervene, but nobody's uh, communicated anything with her. Construct. 18 to hit for uh, the construct. Against, oh, on the phone. Gorgle Blork. I think Gorgle Blork gets hit with the 18. Okay. The damage is not going to be, ooh, that's a critical. Oh, uh, no. 25 bludgeoning. Jeez. Uh, we're not sure what Gorgle Blork's status is, but the last thing he realizes, oh, that thing's kind of sharp. I really should take a different blorf. Splat. Or in his language, oh, I'll draw, I'll draw. <laughs> oh. So we will uh, we'll we'll catch up with Gorgo Blork in a moment. I believe that's the all saga the... of Gorgo Blork. <laughs> it's, it's sad. Uh, what are you going to have Gosh do? Gosh is really trying to figure this out and has had no success whatsoever so far. This is way uh, beyond his pay grade. He can't go after the cube. Damn it! I mean, he could potentially. Because isn't he afraid? Oh, yeah, that's right. He's still afraid, so he can't go any closer to that thing. In fact, he's having a hard time doing anything right now. And there's there's a shadow, uh, sh a humanoid-shaped shadow next to him? There is. And it seems to be looking very menacing. 
The only real feature it has are two glowing silver eyes. Reminds me of the diamond. Doesn't it, though? Uh, what would you like him to try to do? He does have claws. Trying to figure that out. <laughs> um. He can also try... He can try his trick, which he did do on, I think... I think it was on Medric, mm -hmm. where he stared at you and suddenly knew one of your secrets. Oh, right. Uh, so he can try that. Uh, you don't know if... I mean, he's not really sure if that's effective against shadow beings, but... Stare deep into its silvery eyes. Yeah, Figure stare deep into its soul. Wait, does it have a soul? Is it, is it, is yeah. it conscious? Is it is a it soul? Is it an enemy or is it a friend? I mean, that That's part's pretty out. clear at this point. Oh. Anything short of a one roll would be like, yeah, no, it's an it's enemy. <laughs> uh, it definitely seems to have seeped through the barriers. So it could try figuring out something at another place, try a different approach to figuring something out, go defensive, go offensive. What would you like Gosh to try to do? Well, he's he probably is... going to go defensive because he doesn't have that many hit points. <laughs> okay. And neither the, do any of us. Oh, crap. Then you guys have been battered along the way. It's true. We've kind of been slapped around a bit. Hmm. And if he backs up, then whatever that is gets an attack of opportunity, which I don't want to. I don't want to have happen. But... I mean, he can slink away from it, but he's not going to be able to get far enough away that it probably can't catch him. So. Yeah. You know. The the entire five feet he can back away. I mean, he oh, but probably... he'd be closer to the whatever cylinder is there. He can, so he can he technically. Any... Oh yeah, that's right. He can't go any closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's kind of in a bad spot. Um, he he literally can stay where he is or go five feet away. <laughs> yep. And that's. I be... vote. I vote. Try to look into the the secrets. Yeah. Because why not? Okay. Uh, it will try to do this. Uh, let's see. It is a contested wall. It's like Care Bear Stare. But... Uh... Nothing Stare. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that's actually immune to that. Uh... All right. So... Uh, Gosh turns to the creature beside him, and you can see the intensity in his gaze. It's almost palpable. He's studying it with all of his, his insight. You can almost feel the psychic waves emanating from him as he's pushing in on it. And then uh, he kind of looks intently at it. His eye opens a little bit wider, and then he kind of blinks twice. Um, looks at... I say, looks at, at Medric. Nothing there. Damn. No thoughts that us? empty. Something like that. Um, so that's Gosh's action. He <laughs> doesn't have a lot of other options at the moment. No. <laughs> uh, Just get ready to hit whatever buttons need to be hit then. Well, that was his action, so he's he's not he's not ready, and he also didn't learn anything, so he can't really help with this one yet. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if we have Silas back. Yep. So Silas. Gorger uh, Blork might be a pancake. Yeah, uh, Gorger Blork took an uh, an eighteen to hit and twenty five damage. Ow. I am dead certain that he's dead. I was yep. pretty certain of it. He's 16 and he had nine hit points. So I'm going to X him out there in case someone wants to to help Gorgo. Actually, he's a summoned creature, isn't he? Yep. So Gorgo Blork. Oh. And it just, um, just vanishes. I'll let Silas know when I see that uh, Gorgo Blork is a pancake. What was he trying to do? Yeah, I can feel that. Um, he was getting some sort of glowing cube that Medric had seen in there. I think it might be a power source. Maybe we can put that into the empty one. 
I'll ask Valenti, if I go out there, are you able to, to let them know that I'm trying to get you out of here by using that cube? Oh, is that what you're attempting? I can, but the Segex Tower is propping up the barrier right now. Okay. The barrier doesn't seem to be holding. It won't hold for long, no. If you wish, I will inform the Construct to not go near it, or near you. I would say have it defend itself while I try to get the cube, and I'll put it into the, the power source that's empty. All right. If you Taking think that'll work. the battery work. from the remote to put it into the other thing. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, you feel like Valenti has made, uh, has understood what you're doing. Uh, Perfect. And we'll tell the construct different instructions. Uh, it I has can a very get there. limited instruction set. Uh, I you can. would like to. Uh, now. You are now in full view of the thing beyond the threshold. Yep. Uh, did save against it before. Yeah, it's true. You did save, so you're okay. Um, it is still frightful and very much there. And you can see these massive tears in where the barrier is, almost like they're being propped up by dark light. Yep. Uh, and I, I had verbalized what... Gosh had told me like with the matching s symbols. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to basically I'm the closest person here to do this part and I have good sleight of hand and thieves tools. I'm actually going to try to use the the thieves tools to like nudge it out of place. Okay. It is stuck in there pretty strongly. Um, you can now make out the edges of this silver uh, silver square, or silver cube, I should say, um, as some of the, and you can even see that where the faces have fallen off, uh, the stone faces around it, which had basically been interface buttons, essentially. Um, they they reveal on the cube very simple geometric shapes on the outside of the cube. Okay. I'm going to steady myself and try to thieves tools this. All right. 22. 22. Nice. So um, describe how, I guess, probably the, the most ubiquitous thieves tool you've used so far is the pry bar. <laughs> so I kind of imagine there's a small pry bar in there and you jam it into where the, the rock of the edge is. Um, roll me a... Hmm. Roll me a dexterity saving throw. I'm curious what might happen in this case. Huh, okay. I have to look it up. Yeah, 14 is fine. Um, as you kind of lever it out, you realize that if you're not careful, um, you'll actually depress one of the sides of it which you know in the in the construct that was in would actually activate whatever this is but you managed to kind of lever it out and just come right to the edge of ah, the button's not fully pressed in so i can get that extra inch i need this way and then jiggle it this way and it comes pops out into your hand uh it's heavier than it should be for something which is only about two inches on a side uh it does look like a cube let's see here See if I can find the description. Uh, it seems to be inscribed on the surfaces with very simple versions of some of the uh, uh, the gnomish runes you've had before. Uh, no, it wouldn't be gnomish runes. It would be uh, celestial, but they're not active celestial. Um, it has a square on one side, a circle on another, a triangle, a rectangle, uh, and a... Um, I think I'm thinking of uh, uh, Pentagon and then one side is kind of um, open if you will there's a depression on it rather than a symbol popping out but you now have that in your hand okay I will then bonus action dash 
Fair enough. To get back inside. Okay. And to here. Am I able to close the door on my way in? There is no door. Oh, there. Yes, we blasted the crap. <laughs> so it's just a big open gap. Okay. All right. That is me. Um, the only kind of icky part about that is stepping through Google Blork. I'm oh, sorry. No, he's a summoned creature. The, 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 yeah. There's no, there is no residue, thankfully. There, there is no Google Blork pancake. That's right. Google Blork was squashed into non-existence. Um, Dudek, what would you like Dudek to do? Oh, should there be a red circle on the one Dudek next to? Uh, yes, you did succeed at that one. There we go. There's no exact matching, so it's kind of bobbing from side to side. But yes, that one has been completed. So what would you like Dudek to do? I, I think I'm helping. I've almost got the hang of this. A few Maybe more years over. and I'll be able to write it myself. Hmm. He could go over and help uh, Medric. Yeah, because Medric has no clue what's going on. There is also so potentially a threat right in the middle of everything. Oh, Annie, um, mm -hmm. you would have noticed there's another one of those creatures in the other room, right beside yep. the chamber with, uh, with uh, um, the yep, woman. Guys, there's, there's, a, there's a dude in here, too. So, just so you know. Yep. And I saw the one out there on the way back. Gross, be screaming, don't. She like sneezed and. Anyway, I'll explain later. <laughs> Spare Just in case we have years. <laughs> uh, so, again, what would you like uh, Dudek to do? There's options. He can try to help out what. Uh, uh, try to <laughs> try to figure out what uh, uh, Gosh can't. There is a threat in the room. Uh, there's another one that hasn't really been. I think you should go over and help Medric. I mean, Medric's going to be the next one up. All right. If we can complete this, then maybe we ha we don't have to fight as much. Yeah. Um, he can easily work his way around the room to avoid that thing. Uh, and how is he going to help? What's he going to try to do over here? What are you trying to do, Medric? Let me see what I can do. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I have no idea about any of this arcane stuff. I've studied arcane stuff, but this is way beyond what I've done before. Do you know, you know uh, this reminds me of an expedition I did once. I found a small cache of, and he starts to go into a story about history when, roll about it is a hundred years ago about how he was working. Uh, history roll would be fine. Yeah, see if he can help out. Uh, let's see. Let's see what kind of analogy drops up. That is a nineteen on a history roll. Nice. So what what history what an, what history by analogy or by symmetry or whatever uh, does uh, Dudek manage to pull up that kind of feels relevant at this moment? Who wants to finish Dudek's crazy story? I don't know. He's not my character. He is for the moment. I had an idea, but it's a really dumb idea. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, we can always like, workshop it. There are no dumb ideas. There are only ideas. Something about a symbol which he thought was arcane in nature, and it's like it turns out it was just like something raunchy about somebody else that was left on a wall somewhere. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So as he's telling it was the story. Beauty the entire time. <laughs> as he's telling the story and kind of. You know, probably trying, he's probably nervous and trying to overcome that nerves in the moment and telling this amusing story. He, sla he slaps his forehead at one point. That's it. This isn't nearly as complicated as we were making it. This is a practical room, a practical space. All of these things have practical meanings. Uh, and he uses that as his way to, to try to help out and figure out what the combination of things is. Because although it's enciphered, it is meant to actually be functional. Mm-hmm. All yeah, right. just let me which buttons to press and when and what sequence, and I'll do my best to remember. Okay. 
Uh, well, Medric, you're up. Dudek can help in this, depending on what you want to do. I say, go for religion. This place is using uh, uh, celestial language. Okay. He certainly uh, can. Maybe it's religious symbols that. Uh, All right. I'd, so I'd, looking at but, symbols. But that's the role. But what are you actually doing? What's the fiction lead here? Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe the the thing that Dudek came up with is like, oh yeah, I mean, like this is religious symbols and this is practical stuff. So since uh, Medric's a an actual cleric, didn't mm -hmm. I do a religion role earlier? Or, or that was before this skill challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't part of the challenge, no. Again, no, that, that, is, that is the good uh, 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 how, but what's the what? What are you actually trying to do? And I mean, describe for me what the contents that. of the chamber might be that you might be doing this for. This is one of the ones that's getting a direct lightning feed. Okay. Now, lightning causes fire and Ignis is fire, so have I seen anything like this in my teachings before? Again, not the how and not the why, but the what. What are you actually doing? It could be as crazy as you pull out a frying pan and stick it in there, or it can be as as uh, funny as uh, you realize that you can conduct electricity. It may hurt, but you can do it. Or, you know. Rearranging puzzle pieces. <laughs> I just, I need to be able to, like, see everything. That's why I'm kind of having, coming up with blanks. <laughs> sure. Uh, I understand that. This is this is an open an open creative exercise, so if you wanted to invent the things you see, you certainly can as well. Or okay. if you saw something in a movie you liked, then just go with that. Um, that's fine, too. Imagine it as uh, something that you saw once, which was really cool, the way they solved the problem. Um, and yeah, so I like... This uh... oh, please go ahead. The cylinder is with circles in them. They're done already, right? Uh, that's right. So there's only it's, two more? It's the, you know, there's three more. So there's an open space and the two corners. And then gotcha. you have the one spot in the middle where all of the... Um, no, somebody's playing with the distance. Uh, <laughs> it's the one spot in the middle which is where the power is emitting from. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This can be a cool thing with a video game you saw, maybe, or it can be something, I mean, we can go to, to Indiana Jones inspiration, where he just has a bag of sand and decides, <laughs> it's just a weight problem. Um, but he didn't figure, it wasn't a sleight of hand to figure out the weight problem, it was his, his uh, archaeological background or something like that. So, given this idea uh, the of the religion, here It was physics. Physics the entire physics, time. exactly. So All archaeology here, like, is physics. What's, what's next to me? Uh, what's next to you? I have to move my yeah, turn order. Because I see like a way. blue circle in the wall, but it's like, is there anything there? The, the blue circle is, again, these are just markers for me to indicate things have been done or not done. Um, you're right next to you, to the left of you, that's where the, the power is arcing out of a hole in the floor. Okay. And you had seen, uh, the cables and bundles that run under where that, uh, that open grating is running to that spot. Does anything look unplugged? Um... Maybe, if that's what you want to find. If you, if, you, if, you, if you think that's the theory you want to go with, and you roll and you succeed, then that's what happened. All right, so um, first rule of tech support, is it plugged in? <laughs> okay. So I'll just look to see if it's plugged in properly. <laughs> okay, so you're using religion to justify that? Uh, that oh, no. Oh, shit, right. I was, I was supposed to use... Ah, uh, crap. Well, you wanted to use... You can use whatever skill you like, as long as it's not one of the ones that people have used already. So you had sleight of hand... Um, Perception, investigation, and sleight of hand are used. Right. Up. Okay. Do do any of the symbols look like fire? Maybe. You want to use religion okay, for let, that let, to go. This is. The, I'm going to try to draw on my fire knowledge. That that works. Yeah, and it's like if there's any symbols that look like fire, I'll just cast produce flame next to it and like hold it not on the symbol but like next to the symbol to see if it reacts. Okay. Which makes no sense, but hey. <laughs> It's, I, I'm trying to adopt the, the play, role to, play to see what happens, basically. All right. Um, so you, you do have advantage on this roll. So, which not is good. disadvantage. I rolled a five. <laughs> so you, you produce the flame next to it, what you think is a, a flaming signal. And the flame goes off, 
but it doesn't seem to have the effect you were expecting, which was to, I guess, smooth out the power. Um, so you will have to try something different. Um, you do, however, uh, provoke a backlash uh, as you get close to it. So give me a... Shoot, I moved my cursor. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, give me, I believe it is a de 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 dexterity save, DC uh -oh. 13. Got a disadvantage. 13, 10. Fuck. <laughs> uh, so, unfortunately, that's not a success. So, you take three points of lightning damage as it kind of sparks out as you get close to it uh, without having to having been able to control it. Well, it doesn't like fire. Apparently, fire and lightning are not the same, no matter what uh, the avatar told you. <laughs> All right. That's uh, your action. If you would care for a move or a bonus action, you can certainly do those as well. I don't really have a bonus action. I mean, I, I could cast a weapon, spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon, like, true. I'm out of level two spells after that. <laughs> And we might need some healing. <laughs> I mean, it does seem like dire circumstances at the moment. Mm -hmm. Damage done now is dam damage prevented that doesn't need to get healed. Okay. Today's so damage weapon. is tomorrow's healing. <laughs> 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 and you could cast spiritual weapon at a higher level if you have higher level slots. Yeah. I don't think it does anything extra, but you can always sacrifice a higher level spot. Oh, yeah. No, it does more damage. Oh, it does. Okay. Mm hmm You certainly can. All right. Well, this creature is making me, like, it's giving me the heebie-jeebies, so I'll cast this ferocious 11 next to it. Okay. Oops. Uh, the entire map's moving. What's going on? Okay. Uh, I don't think it's me. Earthquake. <laughs> uh, mm. I just want to get your spiritual weapon, which I have here somewhere. Uh. Okay, I guess to get an extra die of damage, it has to be a level four slot. Or sorry, is this spell using? Yeah, four slots. So it's a level There's three spell. So, but you you can also, spell. but but oh. you can also do a higher level healing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll yep. cast it at level two, <laughs> and hope we don't need like too too much healing. Right, All oh, good. We'll survive. We'll be fine. I will put it on the map. Give me a second to uh, transfer ownership. So you can move it. The fiery hammer of death. Yeah, you should be able to move that now. So you want to put it wherever you put it. And swing. Sure thing. So that's a spell attack modifier over there. Plus seven. Ten to hit. Oh my god, my rolls are shit today. <laughs> All the rolls are shit today. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, ten is not a hit. So it the just, it swings sadly into the air. The spiritual fury. Uh, remind me again what this looks like. It's a flaming hammer that's spinning around. Right. Uh, it seems to to spin around, and you would think that it would connect with the large cloud cloud-like person, but unfortunately not all the cloud is the person. It's hard to tell exactly how that's supposed to work. Um, but uh, that is your action and your bonus action if you want to move. <laughs> Otherwise, it moves on I'll from you. I'll ask you, Dudek, where should I be standing? For what? To press buttons if I need to do anything. I mean, here, I guess, there? I, I really don't know. Anywhere there's buttons, I suppose. I'll stand in front of buttons and hope they're the right ones. <laughs> okay. Uh, on to their turns. So, uh, that one right there is going to go after uh, Gosh, because Gosh is right there. And Gosh was staring at him awkwardly, I guess. That was a dirty 20. Um... For 14 points of damage, of necrotic damage, Oof. 
As it doesn't hit him, it passes its its claw-like hands through him. And now, uh, constitution save. Failed the constitution save. No, gosh. Uh, as Gosh looks diminished in stature. Um, I'm going to mark this as this way. Uh, that was 14 points. Uh, Medric, from your perspective, you see the spirit of Gosh reducing. Um, and the skin grows a little tighter. The body grows a little bit weaker. And oh, you damn. feel like it's sapped his very essence away. Translated into game terms, his maximum hit points is now, are now reduced. Shit. Uh, Don't let those things touch you. I'll scream to everybody. The other one in there... Ooh, the other one in there has to make a choice. So I'll make it come down to an int roll. Um, if it rolls... Uh, it's really just a luck. Um, if it rolls... 15 or higher on an int roll it will go after Annie otherwise it goes after Valenti okay uh, 19 it goes after Annie fun times uh, but you see it not go around but straight through Valenti the body shakes and wriggles as the thing passes through it, but it seems to not take notice of that. Um, it gets an eight to hit, which misses you, but you can feel yeah. the sort of, when it swings by you, you know when you when something large swings by you, if you've ever you know had a baseball bat swung by you, there's sort of that gap of air that you feel, especially, when, well, because it misses you. Yeah, the whoosh, you feel that sort of cold whoosh as you're almost like your soul is dragged into the tidal wave of this passing by. Uh, outside, that one is going to move into, what is their movement? Okay. Uh, this one faces a similar question. If it's smart, it goes after you. It does not seem smart so it goes directly after Valenti. No. Valenti cannot move. So it gives it advantage on the hit. It might still miss, essentially, the soul. Which it does. As you see it now move into the tank with the Valenti and start to encircle it, it starts to spin inside the tank, almost like it is now a liquid merging with the liquid inside the tank. It obscures Valenti from what you can see. Um... There is no response from Valenti, however. Uh, let's see. The other ones are not seen, so you do not know what that happens with them. Silas. Hey. And this uh, will probably be... Oh, sorry. Uh, on, a, on a 20. Sorry. The yeah. start of a round. This will probably be the last round because we want to... Uh, well, actually, I'll ask you because we're about 10 to the hour. We wanted to end to the hour. Do we want to press on, or do we want to hold from here? It's going to take more than one round, I suspect, to finish this off. We can do one more round and see if it's done within 10 minutes, or we can we can pause from here, starting at the top of the initiative. It's a good time to think about it. I think Just starting at the top ne next session would, would be best. Okay, any other thoughts? I know what I'm doing next, and I'll remember next or two weeks from now, so... I'm sure you can make a note in, in, your, in your notes as well. I'm I'll put a giant arrow next to this spell. Holding okay. power cube. It's true. All right. Well, then we will bring this session to a close on a question. What happens next? This place is falling apart around you. You are managing to try to continue with this part of what you decided is the mission. Hopefully, you can succeed. 
And you probably will, because you guys are the heroes. You guys are the ones that make the stories. We're heroes that keep rolling very poorly today. <laughs> Unlike Google Blork, who unfortunately came into this world with a mission of carrying things. To carry a post. <laughs> and it didn't go so well, but nonetheless. Well, then we'll call this to a close. I want to thank my players for sticking through this unusual conflict. And uh, the dire circumstances, perhaps, that you're facing. But, uh, you know, you're not doing too bad. It's just that things get bad when on the edge of a knife, on the edge of the void between here and the far realms. If you at home would like to see what has happened and led up to this point, the 69 episodes that came before or the 40-something recorded episodes of the previous campaign, you can go to YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCIF1. Look for The Legends of the Drowned Isles as the master playlist for everything. I also have a Legends of Amatia in case we have different non-drowned isles things. I don't know if we will or not. I just get ambitious. But there's also the C2 or Campaign 2, the Great Confusion playlist where you can see just things from this particular thing. We should be playing in two more weeks september is a question mark uh, as i'm going to be moving in september and that's got a lot of extra time taken up but we'll see how we can move through it and then in september we also have a gaming convention <laughs> uh there's also other things so uh yeah we'll, we'll september see september is just an entire question it is yeah, it's a big question mark but uh once again uh thanks guys for playing thanks for watching at home and I should, I never did figure out in 70 episodes, I've never figured out how to end this <laughs> properly. But uh, stay tuned. It's over 100 if you count both campaigns. So I, I'm even worse off for not having to <laughs> not end this. None of us know. That's true. Never ends, it just keeps going on and on. The never ending story. See you guys in a couple of weeks. Credits are rolling.